everyone, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Pete. Oh, coming in <laughs> hot. Coming I know. in hot. I'm very excited for our show today. I think you know why. It's because uh, it's Old Home Week. We have our our dear friend of the show and and uh, uh, ADHD podcast Hall of Famer uh, James Ochoa is going to join us and talk about uh, our ADHD story. And I'm excited to to have him. I I think you you have set me up, Nikki, in a place of great vulnerability. Right? You just pretty much said pretty Pete is going to do a thing with you. You're going to uh-huh. love it. And uh, so I come eager and open and willing to learn. And, and but I do have to say, so. I did say if you're not comfortable, we can pivot. <laughs> pivot. Okay. I don't. I'm I think okay we'll be with okay. pivoting. <laughs> Well, before we dig in, uh, we're going to head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or, of course, subscribe to the mailing list. And we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really connect with us, join us in our ADHD Discord community. It is super easy to jump in the general community chat channel. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord and you will be taken over to the general invitation and login. But wait, you say there are only a couple of channels in there. I say, that's right. If you want more of the channels and you want to see where all of the peoples are really hanging out, you have to join and become a patron at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, for a few bucks a month, uh, you will get access to early releases of each episode, longer uh, episodes where we talk a little bit before and after each show. And of course, you get access to all of the super secret, nay, triple secret channels uh, in our Discord server. That's where the community is really hanging out. And so uh, we invite you to do that. You don't have to do that to listen to the show, obviously, but it helps us to support the show, continue to grow the uh, the things that we're doing uh, with the show and with the community and, and bringing you all this hot, hot ADHD content. Hot ADHD <laughs> content. Uh, Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Thank you, everybody. And to all of our supporters, we so, so appreciate it. We have a little bit of news, Nikki. It's yes. our favorite time of the year. It's organizing challenge time. It is. Yes. So uh, we are going to play that declutter game that we did in January of 2022, but we're going to do it in June of 2023. And uh, it's, so we're, we're a little late than what we would normally do it, but that's okay. We're, that's, that's okay. Fine. Don't hold it against us. It's fine. an ADHD community. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, but we're going to play that game where, you know, you get rid of one thing on the first and then you get rid of two things on the second and you do that throughout the whole month of June. Uh, but what's really cool about it is I'm changing it a little bit. Uh, this time around, we're going to have a webinar uh, begin on June 1st to talk about organizing and and some things to to uh, hopefully aim for, you know, for the month, uh, give you some tips and strategies. And then we're going to have different organizing sessions um, throughout the month where we can work together and get our declutter out of or declutter and get the clutter out of the house. And then on June 30th, we're going to have another webinar to wrap up what we did and also talk about how to maintain all of the great things that you did. And uh, we're going to do that uh, on June 30th. So I'm excited. It's a little different than what we did in January, um, but hopefully, be, hopefully it will be nicer weather than what it is in January. And uh, that will inspire people to do this. Because well, you're going to have to have your garage door open. You're right. I'm assuming. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to bury the lead, but I have a feeling I know where you're going to be uh, organizing stuff. Hmm. So this is very exciting. <laughs> James is like, interesting. Hmm. <laughs> That's right. James is sitting here just silently judging <laughs> our organizing efforts. No, I'm thinking, don't tell my <laughs> wife about this because she will, <laughs> she will put me on task. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much, James. Ochoa is back. Uh, you, I don't even know how to introduce you anymore. Uh, our, our regular, you, who are the guys who sit up uh, in the Muppet Show, who sit up in the booth up top? Uh, right. <laughs> you're the eagle. We're in the balcony. <laughs> yeah. We're the balcony yeah. guys. Uh, James Ochoa, you're one of our very, very favorite uh, ADHD uh, uh, thinkers, writers, writers. Uh, uh, 
producers of uh, edu- great education. You've taught us so much about uh, the oh, ADHD storms and navigating them over the number of years you have appeared on this show. We're grateful for you to come back here and talk about uh, talk about telling our AD- learning from our ADHD stories. And it's Waldorf and Statler. Thank you, Brian, in the chat room. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. That's so good to know. Yeah. So welcome oh, back. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, what are you oh, What are you doing right now? Is, what haven't I been up yeah. to? That's let's start. Let's start on that end because there's not much I haven't been up to. Uh, boy, so here we are, 2023. I just we did just cross the seventh anniversary of Focus Forward. Uh, seventh anniversary. Wow. Is that Congratulations. crazy? Congratulations in February, and uh, it is still selling strong. It has a life yeah. of its own, folks. And I really, I can't be more appreciative of that. Um, but I continue to dig in, you know. Uh, I, I feel like I'm just uh, running out of COVID now at this point, the pandemic. I feel like I'm a, a free bird with some new capacity. Because uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I did a lot of uh, emotional, mental, deep diving to really resource myself during COVID. It was just such a uh, bear for all of us. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've uh, got my ADHD town hall, which is my six week to uh, it's a webinar that occurs twice a year now. Uh, model being a touchstone kind of coaching. Nikki certainly knows a lot about that with your practice. You got to keep up with this condition. I'm at 61, sure. headed to 62, they tell me. And um, I'll believe them. Don't at believe the end them. Of the month when it, I won't believe You're not a day over 50. There we go. I like <laughs> that. Uh and, you know, i am also started my professional trailblazing uh, new roadmap for treating adults with ADD for therapists and really just kind of laying out everything I know about this. And um, it's just a lot of fun, a whole lot of fun. And I continue to uh, work uh, directly with clients, uh, evaluations, mm-hmm. you know, uh, strategy work, those kind of things. And book two is coming along. We are we are well entrenched. It's got feet and it's walking. I think it's got mm-hmm. A partial body uh and well that's a uh, horrifying think, metaphor james but i appreciate you well, laying it out there it is a horrifying <laughs> metaphor but you know okay i could probably chose a different one let's see what robin thinks about that whenever you come back you bring you bring an exercise of your of, of the latest thing you're thinking about and today we're talking about the the powerful value of our adhd story can you introduce us to the concept well the concept is if you just look at the distress factor of ADHD that I've written about, the emotional distress syndrome and the disruptions that occur. How many ADHD adults really love the power of their story? How many really love their entire life history where they can go back and glean at eight years old, this is what I did and this is who I was and this is what I this is who I am now? They can't. I mean, you ask ADHD adults and they just shudder. They're like, ah, do not ask me to talk about my life history. Because so, so much me, of that is like all I remember is the pain. <sighs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's what our mind is best at, right? The survival yeah. instinct, the Navy SEAL, as I call it in our brain, which does not eat, ex- does not need exercise, by the way. We exercise it too often. Uh, but that whole idea of value uh, behind your story is your. So my adage is that your entire life history is your most valuable resource. You want to use it like a book of knowledge. You want to be able to refer to it. You want the pages to be dog-eared. You want to be able to go back through it and know who and what you are and how you are, uh, how you've gotten to today. Um, and I talk about things like, okay, what's the wisdom, experience, strength, hope you take from that? And so I have a little, ex, you know, small exercise that I bring people through. I say, just grab something from your life history. Uh, and start asking yourself those questions. You know, what experience did I take? What strength did I develop? What wisdom did I take? What knowledge do I have now as a result of that? It's just a purposeful way to move into thriving, okay? To move away from that distressful aspect. And uh, and certainly the uh, my second book is going to be focused on uh, the incessant storms that do not go away on the ADHD spectrum. And what do you do about them? Uh, they really affect careers and relationships. And so this whole value of your story comes in. How well can you tell your story from a triumphant way? From what it says, I really know myself. So I just, uh, it seems to be this layering effect that I want people to be able to be proud of who they are. Sure, I've got challenges. I, you know, I still run 
seven or eight out of nine symptoms on each of the areas of ADD. And I'm a, <laughs> you know, I just asked my wife, we just crossed 34 years and it's not always a picnic, but you know, we clean up the mess and we resolve things mm-hmm. and we move forward and we reset. And I just want people to look at their stories and have value from it, not mm-hmm. shudder when they think about it. Well, and I've been participating in the most recent uh, town hall that James is offering right now. And uh, what struck me and why I really wanted to bring this uh, to our listeners are the stories that the that the folks had mentioned in in the group. You know, there were two particular ones that we're just really strong in you know, coming from triumph is a really good word, right? Coming from something that was this despair to wait a minute, this, I, I not only overcame this, I became a better person. I became, I, I learned so much more, you know, about myself, but I don't think we do that without reflection. I, I, you know, I don't think you can, I don't, we don't give ourselves enough time. No, no, we don't. <laughs> And the challenge with reflection on the ADHD spectrum, right, is one, the internal evaluator for us doesn't develop as robustly or as well as it could, Mm -hmm. or it will, uh, the evaluation will be very truncated into things that are distressful or difficult or highly passionate. Um, But we just don't stop and we're not able to see ourselves. So you've got to use that. That's this whole mindfulness piece of curiosity, observation to slow yourself down to see who you are. but really, it doesn't stop there, right? This whole value piece says, not only will I triumph, I learn from who I am. Now I can show others that this is something I can powerfully be and live with. And it's not a deficit or a disorder. It's a something that I know who I am. Um, it's still the oddest space for me that uh, I, the one I don't know that will ever go away is the imposter syndrome. It is just, it's insidious. I don't know when it's going to pop up. And suddenly I think everyone's going to leave me and everything I've done is just not worth a thing. And I'm like, I literally sit stunned in, a jo- in curiosity with myself. And there it is again. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. I'm, I'm at the point now where I can shrug my shoulders. I know what it is. It doesn't delay me. But you think about people on the ADHD spectrum. Uh, they just get shut down with it day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, it's tragic. It's Mm -hmm. absolutely tragic. I I appreciate you saying it like that. I've been kind of wrestling with a a metaphor around my experience with ADHD as an adult. And it is, it's been the the, the act of like, I sort of visualize the act of just walking up a, a river. And when I was young, I was at the mouth of the river where the river meets the sea and the pressure of all the water is much higher. And uh, the, I I climb up over the the rocks and the river and I get f- further and further up toward the toward where the river starts. And the closer I get to where the river starts, the the pressure sort of lightens. When I think, when I hear you, as you say, pushing 62 and I'm pushing 51, the, it, it relieves me to know that you're, that shrugging the shoulders is like, okay, I've reached a point where I know I still have it. I'm still standing in the water, but, but I have more behind me than ahead of me. And that has, that, that is a sense of relief. That's, that's kind of the, the, the thing that I have to, the, the picture that I have to paint in, in my head that, that that there's there's more behind me I've learned more I might still feel the same way because my feet are still cold but <laughs> but I've learned more and and yes. I, I know how to walk this particular walk yes yes but now I've learned cold therapy so when my feet are cold I know what's <laughs> happening here you know it can be a positive <laughs> thing that's right yeah <laughs> don't get me started on breathing and cold therapy it's so much fun yeah. uh, you know but those two those shiny objects over the last few years I used a lot of cold therapy mm-hmm. and uh, breathing aspects to really recenter and resource myself. And they've also become not passe, but they're just part of my resource pools now. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. in the box. Which are wonderful. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure what's next, but it's fun. It's always fun to adventure. Before we get into the exercise, I, I love too that you said that you can recognize that this is what's happening and just see it as it is. And I think that mm-hmm. that's a really important lesson to learn. I was talking to a client yesterday about uh, working too much. 
mm-hmm. and not having that balance between work and, and uh, life. And, uh, and there was this real need to keep working more and more because of this fear of, is she going to get fired? Are they not going to see her as valuable? Mm -hmm. Should she be doing 70 hours of work? You know, all of these things. And, and it was interesting because we sat in the awareness of, well, what would happen if you got fired? What would happen if this happened, you Mm -hmm. know, kind of sat there, but it, she's not at that point at all yet, but she will Mm -hmm. be where she can just sit and see, okay, this is what's happening. It's just this kind of irrational fear uh, and sit there and be able to, to see it as it is. And, and that's hard. I mean, that's, it's hard to, to be able to do that, but I appreciate you bringing it up that it's possible. Oh, it's, it's more, it, it's absolutely possible. And, and something like, cause it, with someone like that, it may not be an irrational fear. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I right, tell people, yeah. I, I tell people with ADHD, uh, because we have so much worry and internal distress that's going on, unless there's overt knowledge that I know something is way off base, don't play into it because we have so much of what I call a shadow syndrome. It just feels like it's that way. Uh, but the ability to face it and look at it takes the air out of it, right? Mm-hmm. It takes the balloon out of it. And uh, it's interesting. You would talk about going upstream, uh, Pete, because uh This was in a spiritual book by a gentleman named Mark Nepo, which I absolutely love. He wrote a book called Awakening. It's kind of a daily spiritual mantra uh, space. But he talked about how uh, salmon, when they're swimming up a river, actually go to the strongest point of the current. Because when they start swimming up that strongest point of the current, the path is clear on the other side. Mm. And it was very metaphorical. It's very difficult. But it's like also I wrote about in Focus Forward, right? It's the whole yeah. Moby Dick story, you know, of a crazy, a crazy Jack. I think it was. It was just like on the boat going, no, we need to go through that storm. Uh, you go right into the front of it. And, yeah. But everything tells us not to. And mm-hmm. so learning that resilience to stay right in front of it and look at it. And the key to that is to have that support system around you, right? People who don't think you're crazy. People who support you in staying with yourself. and following through and kind of going to what works for you and i'm god i just i'm getting more and more convinced that like if we take strategies personalizing strategies it has to come from the inside out i just am not a believer in organizational books it's not that those aren't helpful Mm -hmm. in a place of ideas and brainstorming but it has to come from the individual person in a way that's meaningful and it just doesn't work otherwise Mm -hmm. Uh, so I do think that, yes, life stories, the value of them, how to, how to glean value and, and practice it as an exercise. Uh, and I'm still coming through, you know, all of my life history. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's amazing how much courage it gives you to really stand up so that I can't believe I'll be saying things on national podcasts when I think things in my head. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> when I was five years old, you know, and I would throw a tantrum. I was a horrible tantruming, hyperactive, impulsive kid with a with a closed head injury at four years old. Uh, I I wasn't getting attention, so I'd get into the dining room table and I would pick it up on my little five year old back and I would spin it around when people were eating. And it was like <laughs> that's one way to get attention. It sure okay? is. Not the attention you wanted. <laughs> it's a you know? power move, right there. It's a power move. You know, mom wouldn't take me to Kmart because I wanted to go to the Blue Light Special. Yes, I'm dating myself. Uh, but you take that disruptive of a life history, right? And you can take it into this exercise we're talking about, Nikki, where you can ask yourself questions about it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and 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 it's very simple, right? Because the questions like. What knowledge did I take from that? I'm a powerful little kid. Okay? You bet. And I can move mountains, certainly mm-hmm. can move dining room tables. Mm-hmm. You know, what knowledge did I take from that? That I'm just, I have that intensity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the wisdom is that intensity hasn't gone away. And it's still, yeah. it's what I'm swimming upstream with. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know? uh, yeah. And it creates resilience, you know, and, and the hope is, that I can stand in my life and say, oh, this is doable. It's more than doable. You can go, you know, you can go buy 90,000 beads and start chaining them. And six and a half years later, give out 2,500 chains to people because you can't. 
And you know, they're that. hanging up on all of our walls all right now. Walls. Crazy. <laughs> so this obsessive drive, as we would say, it, unbridled that can create enormous chaos and really destroy someone's life, if you're not careful, can be bridled, can be mm-hmm. channeled, can be funneled. Uh, it's not an overnight process, mm-hmm. but it is a process that is absolutely doable. Uh, so I'm, I'm here to tell you, it's a lot of fun. It is a whole lot of fun. So, um, well, uh, and you're also here to help Pete walk through this exercise <laughs> <laughs> that he just found Ooh, out about up, yesterday. Set up. Pete's like, <laughs> well, I, okay. So you want to, do you want to set up the exercise and then I'll tell you my reaction to being, having it inflicted upon me? <laughs> I do have a backup plan. I have plan B, but your, your plan is going to be better than mine. I just know. It. Oh, I love it. I love trust falls. This is a, this is a pod, podcast trust falls. Shall we exactly. Right. Exactly. Me. Oh, yes. Uh, it's so much fun. So look, the setup here is you, uh, I do want you to focus on, you pick out an experience from your life before now, something that's, I don't care if it's egregious. I don't care if it's, it's uh, fantastic. You won an award. Um, but you stop and you contemplate in that space and really look at it from a variety of angles. And you ask yourself some questions about it and you begin to see it in different lights. Uh, and so the reality is you get a chance to say, OK, what's a story? What's a story you carry in your life of your life history? So uh, if you want to play along, the vulnerability is let's, you know, let's play along in the ideas of what is a story? Do you have one, Pete? I do. So I, Nikki. I think I think I'm gonna throw up. Nikki oh. sent me a Nikki sent me a note last yesterday afternoon. It was very very busy, and so I didn't actually see it until about you know ten o'clock last night. And and it was hey check out the notes for tomorrow. I've got an exercise you're gonna do with James. <laughs> and then like five minutes later, after I hadn't respond it responded, it's I mean I could do my story too if that doesn't work. <laughs> So oh, I I'm I'm ready. The story that and I looked at the notes and there's all these numbers and things and I started kind of scanning and I immediately came up with the event and it it I realized that it grew in intensity so much that I was like I can't even process the I can't write my notes. I can't pre-scratch out my notes because like I just it's too, it's too embarrassing for me professionally. It's like an embarrassing, and all, and I'm so glad you're here because I keep going back to your audiobook story as a mantra of overcoming these kinds of things. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I have an event. Uh, would you would you like me to tell you the event? Sure. Let's go through yeah. the event. Oh, Jesus. I Take a just, breath. It's all good, Pete. I had just quit my corporate job. I was a director of public relations for a very large company, and I quit because I wanted to push buttons. I was a nerd and a gearhead and I wanted to do the work that I was hiring people to do before. Now I had gotten my undergraduate degree in broadcast journalism and I know how to run cameras and I know how the technology works. It had been some years since since then, but the first job that I accepted on contract was the the wife of a dear friend of mine who worked at a publishing company and hired me to get on a plane, fly down to Northern California or to yeah, Northern California and rent a bunch of of professional camera gear, go to Stanford and record like 10 hours of a Stanford professor uh, doing uh, bonus material for a publication they were they were releasing for him. I had to film this guy doing a talking head video and I had to find a place to light it and I had to do all the gear and all of that stuff. And I landed in Stanford and I was overwhelmed with the exuberance of like being able to do this work. I landed in San Francisco, I'm sorry. And and I, I found the place where I was going to rent the equipment and I was just dizzy with the that just sort of ADHD enthusiasm. Yes. <laughs> and yes. I did not think through at all what I wanted the the finished work to look like. And this was all completely new equipment to me. And so what happened was we ended up in this terrible terrible little study room with no windows, terrible light. The camera was way too close to his face that I produced 10 hours of the worst professional material I've ever produced in my life to the point where the my client, the wife of a very dear friend of mine with whom I have not spoken since, said, oh. we're going to pay you, but you should know we're not using any of this. <laughs> like, that was my first contract job to do. 
And I was, I'm still, clearly, I am still devastated by that because, and I've never done, I hope I don't need to say this out loud. I've never done work so bad since. <laughs> I know how to use, I promise I know how to use cameras and light. I just did the bad work. It was so bad. It was so, it was so embarrassed. And this poor professor is like sitting in this prison cell of a stu oh. study room. And the camera's like at his face. And I'm, I'm trying to convince him, okay, it's okay. You're going to be fine. You're going to look great. I promise we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. <sighs> so... Okay. Ooh. See? <laughs> All right. That's the start, right? Woo. So the, yeah. the start the start is Letty. Yeah. So how many times have you told that story in your life? Not you know? many. <laughs> James, right. I don't tell that right. story very much. Right. Right. Because <clears throat> you know, the best part about that story to me is that uh you would have nowhere else but to go but up, right? From that position. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. accurate. <laughs> Okay, so it's like, okay, let's get this out of the yeah. way. Let's get my epic failure out of the way, which reminds me, of course, of my wonderful storm of uh, draw, you know, uh, recording my audio book uh, and with yeah. all the all the, saying the periods and everything. That was my my great professional storm that y'all were so kind <laughs> to help me with, um, you know. But so you look at that, all right. So that's the first part is being able to witness it with other people and laugh about it. There's humor therapy and being able to laugh at our human condition that is. So illogical and irrational. And on the ADD spectrum, hello, uh, we, we have a lot of humor involved. But what do you think you, so just ask yourself some questions. And when you go through these questions, and by the way, I can uh, send this along, y'all. Y'all can put this in your show notes so that folks will have a, a reference to what we're talking about. You. Uh, you know, what did you learn from the event? What's the first thing that comes to mind? What did you learn from the event? Hmm. Well, um, it, it's re, it, it's kind of hard. I, I feel like I have to categorize it because the the first is I, Good. <laughs> I learned uh, I, I learned pretty immediately what kinds of jobs to say no to do. Right, right. And how that was, critical that was a is that? Big one. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. a huge one. You know, and to learn no? that early too. Right. Yeah. That's what that's, I'm saying. It's like, okay, that, let's get That's this. actually true. I didn't have to dance with the like, oh, I'm, I, I you know, there, there's some question about whether, where this serves my business. Flying around as a solo videographer, producer, what? reporter is not going to be how I, no. how I buy my shoes. Okay. We're going to take that one off the list. Right. Okay. Uh, what strengths do you think you gained from it? Um. I, you know, okay, here's something I've never connected to it, um, which is, I, I think the act of having to sit there for 10 hours and uncomfortably manage a conversation for the first time doing it as a, as a, uh, as a part of a professional endeavor probably set me up for where I am right now today. Right. Right. Like I, right. I feel like I, uh, I feel like I am I am better equipped to sit on a microphone and talk for hours straight with many strangers, many friends um, better as a result of that. That that probably marked an inflection point. The fact that my brain immediately goes back to that day on that campus. Yes. And what I love about that is you're pulling what I call the thread of congruence. It fits. It connects to each other. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about this at the end of this. I want to ask you a few more questions, but this rhyme and reason you're starting to create from it becomes, a, this is how the story becomes valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what hope came from it? Do you have any hope that came out of that? I, can you, can you talk to me more about hope? <laughs> Like, <laughs> I say that as somebody. Like it's got to get. Not, like it's got to get better from than this, this land, James. Going. What is this hope of which so, you speak? Right. So, so the hope would be something as simple as, okay, I never want to do that again. Okay, I will yeah. absolutely not set myself up like this. So the hope is that, uh, you know, I got this over with. It's like there's a there there's there's got to be something better than this. Uh, you know, I, th that's actually interesting. You say that because since that point, I felt like. 
and I don't know that I ever put these words to it, but I feel like I had something to prove. I think I still have something to prove. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I know that I'm I'm not proving anything to Holly, <laughs> my client at the time. She's now divorced her husband. She's gone. She doesn't work at that job anymore. And I guarantee you she doesn't think of me at no. all, ever. No, right? no. That's just the story. She became the avatar, though, against yeah. which I set future endeavors. And I had yes. to prove to myself, my right. version of her in my right. head, that you know right. what? I actually do kind of know what I'm doing. And since went on and did a number of short films right. that actually were properly color graded and yes. edited and looked yes. good. Like that right. was that was a kind of an exercise of hope, I think. Right. Yes. Uh, so just notice what happened there. I, I, I pulled you in and I said those things and kind of worked with you. And you're in a safe place. You're like, wait a minute, I never looked at it this way before. So it actually gave you, and this is great from an ADD point of view, it gave you a hard stop. It gave mm-hmm. you a polar pace to bounce from. Mm-hmm. to say, okay, I'm going to use this as a important space that I know really does give me a sense of depth and character, a strength. Well, and I guess that the word that keeps coming back to me as you're saying all this is control, right? Agency mm-hmm. that I right. it, n- not let, that I, I felt hopeless and out of control and like I was completely faking it. And yet... Right. I was able to turn around and do things that, that were actually moving to other people. And that was really the whole goal. Yes. So what wisdom did you gather in going through that? What How is wisdom from different you... than hope? Wisdom is the things that uh, it could be new knowledge. It could be the, these are the kind of the key pieces of my life that I take with me now. Um, mm. You know, the wisdom I would take from a five-year-old spinning a dining room table is, I have a lot of power and it's highly intensive and I can destroy a room or I can transform a room. That's the wisdom I take, the Mm -hmm. life wisdom. Still, I just, I get it, but I wasn't able to tell people that story even 15 Mm -hmm. years ago. You know, Uh, I was a little hellion. I I thought what you want to tell a story about. It is interesting. See, I grab it in. I grab an insight right here with my own personal life. Who did I polarize in ADHD in 1989, but a little hellion uh, who was hyperactive and impulsive. And I tell the story of him getting 40 to 45 pairs out of 50 in a card sort game of 100 cards. And he had a photographic memory. Okay, Mm -hmm. so it makes sense that I would polarize out of an intense, you know, child that was a hellion. That's who I was. So that's actually that's a brand new insight for me. I never put those pieces together for myself. And this is what we're doing, Pete. So wisdom is kind of what you carry with you through your life that become life lessons that you really refer back to. Anything that floats up around that space. And again, these aren't have tos. These yeah. are curiosities and you're sifting. Well, I, I, I think so much of my of my sort of professional trajectory since then has been one of exercising agency and the the film projects that I've taken on have all been under the auspices of under the assumption uh, that I am going to be driving the final result and I'm going to be telling the story. And if you don't really like that, there are other people who will do exactly what you say, client. But if you want me, I'm going to tell a story. And and that was that I I think, it, it you know, gift of hindsight is is a really important bit of awareness of just where, because I tend to be, I think I'm a pretty flexible guy, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but in terms of the, the work that I put out, I like to have my hands in, in it completely. And, and so at least I, I feel like this showed me kind of where the line should be drawn. Right. And if you think about that, Pete, that builds integrity. Okay. Someone's going to really like who you are because you're not going to bullshit them and you're not going to just give them what they want. Uh, you know, on a film that they want because they want it a certain way. You're going to really let them know in truth, this is how it's going to work best. I was told uh, by another very early client um, that one of the reasons that they kept me around is he was the CEO of his company. And he said, one of the reasons they keep me around is because of exactly that. And I've never really put that together, that I was unafraid to speak truth to power. Right. And right. that for somebody right. who signs my checks to be able to, Nikki's raising her hand. <laughs> what? I am because I just want to share something that I'm reflecting on about wisdom in you and you and what your story that you're telling us. Because from day one, when we started working together, 
I would say that the number one, maybe not number one. No, I would say number one. Quality was really important to you when it came to the podcast. You know, like you Mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that if we were going to do this, I had the right microphone, I had the right stand, you know, everything was, was quality. Mm -hmm. And to this day, it's still, you you prove it last week, we did a, a, a video on, or I did a webinar and the recording from zoom was a nightmare Mm -hmm. (laughs) trying to get that to replay for everybody. And so Pete says, you know what, let's get it out of zoom. We're going to put it in, um, Venmo. We're going to put it in Vimeo. 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 I always get those two mixed up. (laughs) And not only did he just like transfer it, he took out the 10 minutes of me trying to figure out how to enable the chat, put music to it, took out the, icky stuff put music to the end and made this like beautiful video (laughs) replay so you did capture something out of the fire and ashes yeah which is what you weren't able to do for your first experience but you knew you know yeah there it is yeah i i think that's it's so funny uh man inflection points right like i that's a that's a thread i don't know that i would have have reached I like the word inflection point. It's a real stopping point to say, hey, okay, where is my life? What did I learn from it? Mm-hmm. Because we're so afraid to do it. Okay. The last question I have there, which is similar. And by the way, these questions are there to trigger a sense of uh, knowledge or movement or thought process. So some of them, yeah, they sound similar, but they're going to land in different ways for different people. Mm-hmm. So like the last question is, did you gain any new knowledge that you have now? Um, so knowledge, when I when I interpret the word knowledge, like I immediately go toward like technical knowledge. Right. Right. Like what did I what? Did I, and because this was a technical right. feat, a technical failure. Right. Uh, yeah, I think I did. And, and I immediately went back and honed my my skills in terms of, right. of lighting and using you know, the right kinds of filters and those kinds of things. But um, for small spaces, like trying to capture, like what, given the, the, how would I have done it better given the same right. circumstances had I had my wits about me and not right. been all over the place, right? Um, and I think that is a, that is an actual, that, that that's, that's one of those accom- like personal yeah. accommodations, which is if I can do a dry run of a project now, I will do a right. dry run of a project. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. When I, I when, when yeah when I go to do a speech, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do a three hour training here for some therapists in Austin. I'm going to the location. Mm-hmm. I'm going to walk it. I'm going to look around in it because I know what that does for me. Mm-hmm. You know. So yeah. the knowledge you're gaining also helped your dear podcast mate. Uh, you know, in <laughs> capturing a film. I mean, this is truly these these are the threads you want to pull forward that really you live from. This is I, why I find it so powerful. Well, I, I, so related question. Are we, is that the end of the, of the, yeah, the yeah, litigation? Yes, yes. <laughs> Beautifully <laughs> done. James and Pete. The cross yeah. examination. Wonderful. Well, I, <laughs> some really interesting new threads and, and a reinterpretation yeah. of the way to, to think about that inflection point. And the piece that I feel like I hang on to is the anxiety that I produced garbage, like the weight of my interpretation of the resultant work still sits in my stomach. And that's the thing that still made me sick last night when I saw this and immediately thought of this event. Like I, I am, I, I don't necessarily feel like I, like I'm at a place where I don't feel still <laughs> 2023. This was like 2004. It's been almost 20 years. And I still feel as sick about the fact that I turned in 10 hours of garbage that was never used as I did that day. Right. Now, so one of the things you, and it'll be interesting to see going forward with that, because you could create a journal, I call it a resource journal of your life experiences and memories, and watch if this softens over the years. Mm -hmm. Watch if this is a different space, because you had the ability to look at it deeply, right? To really face it head on with a place that was safe. And that is what we need to do on the ADD spectrum. We've got to have a place of safety with those around us to just look at our life, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's just, uh, that's the deepest kind of living that I know how to do. Mm-hmm. 
and it's fascinating because you uh, there were at least three, four, or five threads here uh, that really felt like they were oh interesting, and I caught one too. Yeah, on my five year old, it's right. like right. this is the sifting piece. This is the curiosity observation piece. This is the critical aspect for mindfulness on people with ADD. What are we going to fill our minds with that really resource us? Mm -hmm. uh, stop trying to have someone else figure it out for you. Get into a such place where you can be in a place to begin figuring it out with other people for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, I didn't think I had much to write about in my second book. Mm. Now it seems like it's going to be more important than focus forward because we all have these storms that are incessant. We don't have a way to look at our life history uh, in a way that's dynamic, yeah. in a way that's meaningful. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to poke at this, but only because you're a, a I consider you a, <laughs> a, a mentor and a model for uh, healthy living with ADHD. But I want to keep coming back a little bit to the because I feel like we we have similar spaces around these examples the adhd book and you're you're telling and we'll put the link in the show notes because you're telling mm -hmm. of that story of discovering that you had missed the fact that you had done that reading and nobody had told you is it, it, it that fills me with a very similar sense of of yeah. gastrointestinal <laughs> grief that i feel with with yeah. my own project and so i'm curious not necessarily how but when if and when do you feel like you were able to move past that Part. Uh, what's moving past it? You live with it. Yeah. You integrate it. Embrace okay. It. So I go back. All right. And wonderful ACX audio, right? Who sells my audio books. <laughs> they don't remove, you know, the reflections of uh, the two stars I got on that, uh, on that audio. And I will go back and I read those, Pete, and I still have that same thing you're talking about. I have that, oh, ugh. but I know what it is now. So it's an ability to know what the story is and we've moved beyond it. This is what I've learned from it. This is who I am. But that's being human. I think people with ADHD are just, we're so much more human on that human element of disruption than other people. Um and we have an opportunity to really turn our lives around uh, by being able to stop and look at it. There's so many of us we want to run ahead, get it organized, somebody fix it, someone give me a medication, get it, da, da, da. <sighs> you know. And I Isn't think that part of it's that's like a weirdly I, I don't know. This is because again, more water behind me than in front of me, I guess. But it it feels like when you when you talk about it that way that there is a sort of capitalist entitlement to. <laughs> to healing, right? Like, yes. I feel like my healing with ADHD yeah. should be transactional. I can throw money at a lot of problems <laughs> and fix them. Why can't I do that with my brain? Yes, yes. I think that's going to be, so, you know, in the second book, it's going to be uh, about the storms we all go through. One of them has got to be the fix-it storm. Someone yeah. just fix this for me. Please. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, ah, uh, ah. Uh, you made you know? such a good point, though. I, I wrote it down, and I'm going to, I'm going to, engrave this somewhere i don't know in a wall somewhere uh, <laughs> not not to get past it but to live with it i think that that's such that's so important our lives are fabric right we interweave it all the time and it's not just a trite ego spiritual you know kind of space it's a real deal and the real deal is you've got to be able to embrace it mm -hmm. uh, in its human condition and really drop into the middle of it and know what it is. It you know, it's interesting. Um, I I have a lot of, I'm not dealing with grief, but I have a lot of people around me who are dealing with grief right now. Mm -hmm. And it, when you say that, that's what it reminds me of. You don't get right. past somebody. Oh, no. no. You losing someone unexpectedly no. or no. even expectedly. Yeah, you ever want to come in? You ever want to have me back on about grief? I'll tell you about grief. I, I would love, love you talking too. about grief. Yeah, it's because, uh, it's in yeah. my world right now a lot. So well, yeah. it's been in my world on and off, and and, and grief takes uh, it takes a very conscious effort to get through around memories and carrying memories of the loss, so that you uh, live in honor rather than in grief or in being shut down. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole idea is about grief. So so. Before we do that, and before we do your second book, when it comes out, because that will be on the book club 
uh, list for sure. We are doing your book uh, in this next. Um, Look at all. She's holding up the book. Yeah. It's full of post-its. Look at that. Oh, I love that so much. Not only post-its, it. but it's like uh, highlights. Uh. I have highlights everywhere. <laughs> and uh, I love your book. I love your work. And uh, it's um, I. It's so interesting to me because we were talking about group coaching and, and in one of our meetings, we were thinking, gosh, a book club would be kind of fun, right? Like it's different. It's different. And when we talked about doing your book, I was so excited. I was like, oh, I can't wait. Like I'm going to do this. And then James said, oh, I see that you might be doing this. I would show up. <laughs> Yeah, and I love book clubs. We are love going to. Oh, I'm so excited to have you drop in. Yeah. Uh, a do you couple, do you put on like a big, a wide brim fedora and dark glasses, like an actor going to see a movie that they made in their movie theater <laughs> and stand in the back? Like that's kind yeah, of what I imagine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it's such an honor to have you uh, drop in in uh, two sessions. You've agreed to, which is fantastic, and. Uh, and so I just want people to know that we're going to be doing this in the summer. So um, enrollment is open now to sign up for the mm -hmm. book club. And uh, it's eight weeks because I took some time to figure out how do I want to break this book up into sections to give us enough time to really go through it, but also kind of figure out what can you do on your own too. And, right. you know, right. that kind of thing. Right. Uh, but well, yeah, join us. I can't yeah. wait to go through it and really do a deep dive with other people too. That's something I'm really excited about is that I read the book by myself. I give it to clients. I talk to clients about it a lot, but I haven't done it in a group setting. So this is going to be really fun. Well, it's just unlocked something, James, that is just really like the, talking about the ADHD storm. It It is something that is feels so naturally universal. Like you talk about somebody who's never heard of it, who's never read it, and they immediately know what it is. Right. That that's a that's an amazing contribution. Well, and the fascinating part is, Pete, like the your great failure, you know, my spinning a table at five years old. Uh, it's the pieces that wouldn't go away. It's those yeah. really, really difficult spaces. Um, and there's a lot written about the ideas of distress and darkness and finding wisdom from those spaces. But it takes the courage to look at them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And that looking at them in the storms with ADD, this is who we are. Let's love and really care for who we are in ways that we can. And I just, you know, again, I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's just, mm -hmm. uh, I really want people to get this. This is no, you know, uh, like Russell Barkley would tell you, this is no cakewalk. This is this is a highly disruptive, but you can learn to live, manage, and really live within it in a way that's powerful. We're all living testimony to that. It's really good. Thank you both so oh. much, Pete. Thank, thank you, you for doing this. I owe you a dinner I, out. <laughs> I am your willing and some your willing guinea pig oh, as ever. I I appreciate I really, it. James. I, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate this, you trusting me and and walking into the space. It's uh, yeah, those aren't simple. As as always, uh, strengths, hope, wisdom, knowledge. Those the mm -hmm. the, the big questions. I, I uh, it, it's it's great, and it gives me new insight, and I am a grateful recipient of it. Thank you, James, as always for your yeah, education so much fun. And, and your wisdom. It's it's really great. Yeah. Where, uh, where do you want to, you you gave the uh, we we let you do your plugs up front, but send them tell them to the website. Where where do you want them to go? Yeah, easy. JamesOchoa.com makes it really, really simple. Um, and that's where all my information is. That's where ADHD for the town hall is. I've sent y'all some links there. And Professional Trailblazing, a new roadmap for treating adults with ADD is an open application. So as I get therapists who want to train with me and I get, uh, I only put six in a group. I keep them really small. Uh, it's 12 weeks of intensive, really kind of dropping in. Uh, and the town halls are two six week webinars every year that I'm wanting. What I'm doing is I'm building a community. Come back twice a year and just really look into your ADD uh, and where you are and reset things. And uh, my second book, um, I believe it's titled. I don't know that it's going to change. It'll be it'll be a publisher that would really have to if I find a publisher and don't do it on my own. But I believe it's going to be um, when the shiny wears off navigating the lifetime storms of adult ADD because boy when that shiny wears off we can really really get it be really hard on ourselves it's just no fun uh, 
you know, well, here, so here we are talking about a storm 20 years old today. Well done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. James Ochoa, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you, Appreciate James. You. Look, so much fun. And I've yeah. never been put in a podcast hall of fame. So I really appreciate the podcast hall of fame. Your uh, alpha member. Marker. You are now. <laughs> alpha member. We're going to send you a plaque. Oh, it's, so it's, so <laughs> it's so great to see y'all. It's so great. To see as you. always, as always. And always. thank you, everybody, for listening and downloading this show. We thank you and appreciate your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to this conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of James Ochoa and Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Thank you.